Hi, everybody. Dan Ullman, Mike Beer. Grade one stakes action at Keeneland for three-year-old fillies. It's a Kentucky Oaks prep. It's the Ashland Stakes. Our Ashland Stakes preview presented by DRF Bets. Please sign up. Please accept a $150 bonus. All you have to do is go to drf.com forward slash join and use the promo code TV150. Let's take a look at this field for race number nine. We're going a mile and a sixteenth. Again, it's for three-year-old fillies. And the number one Monomoy girl is... She's one of the favorites right now for the Kentucky Oaks. Yeah. She is four to five on the morning line. This Keeneland grad might have to deal with a wet track. We're expecting a very messy day in Lexington on right. Saturday. Yeah, we'll see what happens with that because obviously she's, she's an unknown um, on a wet track, but she's handled turf really well. At the beginning of her career, she obviously handles fast dirt very well. Um, boy, I mean, she just feels like she has it all over this field. Her races are, are awful good on both surfaces. Um, yeah, heavy favorite, one that I just found impossible to go against. When we get further down the road, I feel like when you get to Kentucky Oaks time, I'd be a little concerned about her going a mile and an eighth and further. I don't know how far she really wants to go. She's got a lot of talent, though. She was odds on in the Rachel Alexandra off three front running wins. And she gave her connections a bit of an anxious moment coming out of the gate when she bobbled a bit out of the mm -hmm. start, was a little bit far back, but she just made an eye-catching move on the turn, blew things open, and she is now paired up by her tops of 91. The good news is she's also fast out of the gate. Yeah. The Timeform U.S. pace projector has the number seven out there on the lead. That's Typhosia, a horse that underwhelmed in two starts around two turns at Oaklawn Park uh, for Doug O'Neill. But if Typhosia doesn't go or tries to raid or is just looking to get a grade one placing, I wouldn't be surprised if Florence Giroux puts Monomoy Girl on a scent. Yeah, I mean, I guess they got that that option with her and, you know, having the rail just allows Giroux to do whatever he wants because she can come out of there running and make the lead if she has to. But if somebody else goes, she'll just save ground through the first turn. And we've already seen her um, once in her career debut on turf and then last time in the Rachel Alexandra just sit off the pace and make these big powerful runs around the second turn and just crush those fields. I, you know, starting to believe she might be a little bit better from off the pace anyway. Yeah, she had to prove the mile in a 16th. You might be right yeah. about the mile in an eighth in the Kentucky Oaks because she got a little bit tired at the end of the yeah, golden rod, but she looked good winning the Rachel Alexandra. Uh, this pace is not expected to be fast, but did I mention that one of my girls also trained by Brad Cox, if you need yeah. even one more positive for an odds on favor, this will help the 493 ROI just a little bit if Moon Boy Girl wins 38%, last out three-year-old win winners on dirt, first start off a layoff of 45 days or greater. The two Eskimo Kisses has improved by leaps and bounds in her last few races for trainer Kenny McPeak, yeah. but I still think you can say that Fairgrounds Oaks was a closer's race. Yeah. It was dominated by a fast pace. Eskimo Kisses tried to make the last run and she just missed. Her buyer two starts back, perhaps most importantly though, was over a wet track and it was a big one. Yeah, and that could really help her considering the weather forecast for Saturday. So if she catches a wet track, you know, maybe that moves up uh, her chances and makes her um, a little bit more of a threat to the heavy favorite in here. We'll see how that all plays out. I'm having a tough time giving her any kind of a big pass for that last race, though. I mean, as you point out, that rate, that pace was fast. It fell apart at the end. And while she was, you know, racing on gamely and making up some ground late, I didn't really see any big excuse for her not to get up. Patrona Margarita won a slow edition of the grade two Pocahontas at a mile and a 16th, two starts back. And then she came off of a pretty lengthy layoff in the Rachel Alexandra. No match for Monomoy Girl that day, although I do wonder if Brett Calhoun just told Brian Hernandez, save ground, get her around there, right. we'll have her ready for the next one. Even so, she still needs to run a lot faster. Yeah, she's just really got to improve. Um, I'll give her a little bit of credit for um, winning that Pocahontas last year her first time around two turns and first time stretch it out. I thought that she ran pretty well that day, but it wasn't a fast race. And she didn't really make any kind of an impact at all last time. And Dina Del Sur came from off but to win the grade three Florida Oaks on turf last time out. She has done nothing wrong in her yeah. career, but she is trying dirt for the first time. And she might have to deal with a very wet dirt track. I look at this pedigree, I see all turf. Yeah, that's the real problem with her. I mean, I think she's a talented horse. Um, and I sort of understand why they're taking a shot here in a grade one race on the dirt. Maybe a wet track will actually help her rather than hurt her, but I mean, she's all turf on her pedigree. Typhosia switches to IRAD. IRAD might know about that time form US pace projector and might think that he could try to steal this one on the lead, but yeah. the two races around two turns have been really disappointing. Yeah, I agree with that. I mean, she's a pretty fast sprinter. She's run some good races going shorter. If you wanna give her the pass for the Martha Washington because it was a sloppy track, fine, but she might catch a sloppy track on Saturday too. And there's just no sugarcoating her last race. 
race. She was bad in there with a really easy trip. CS in charge won over a wet track. Two starts back in gate to wire fashion. Luis Sayas rode her that day. Maybe Luis is going to put CS in yeah. charge out there on the lead. She won the Sun Coast from just off last time out. It was a slow race though against a weak field. I can see her getting forward in this race and getting a really good trip for a really dangerous trainer. Um, I just don't like her last race at all. I don't think it was a good field, and I don't think she ran that well in it. Not sure she's good enough to win, but think that the six of Panama Beach is going to outrun her odds. Uh, last time out was a race where it just didn't set up for her. She was two to five. There was no pace whatsoever. She was running at a Pletcher horse at the end. Yeah. That horse came back to finish third with a 69 buyer speed figure. I didn't think her golden rod was that bad against Monomoy Girl. I didn't and only start number two. I didn't either. She ran really well first time out over this Keeneland track with a real trip. Um, that, I guess, prompted them to take a shot in the grade two race. As you point out, she did not run poorly at all in that race. You know, listen, I don't really understand running horses like her in graded stakes races. I mean, it's not like she's shown herself to be some kind of tremendous talent that you have to do it. But I do think she's pretty good, and I do think that she can get a piece of so I'm using her underneath the favorite. Let's take a look at our top picks for the grade one. Ashlyn, we're both going with Monomoy Girl. Mike's going to try to get a price in there, one, six, two. I'm going one, two, and three in the prep for the Kentucky Oaks at Keeneland on Saturday. Saturday, the Ashland. Again, if you're playing the Keeneland Saturday card from home, $150 bonus. DRF.com forward slash join. Promo code TV150. Approximate post time for the Ashland. Race number nine at Keeneland, 545 Eastern. Best of luck.